this is the Daily Roundup on the EArts Cambodia channel. A very good evening to you. I'm Andrew Barnes Roberts. For the first time since 1953, a British Foreign Secretary has visited Cambodia. Dominic Raab arrived in Phnom Penh from Vietnam on Tuesday night for the second leg of his Three Nations Southeast Asian tour. He's held talks with his Cambodian counterpart, Mr. Prak Sokhon, as well as Environment Minister, Mr. Sai Samal. He was due to meet with Prime Minister Hun Sen, but that had to be cancelled with the Prime Minister quarantining at home after having had indirect exposure to COVID-19 last week. Dominic Raab tweeted on Tuesday night that he was here to make Britain a force for good in the Indo-Pacific region. He said he would be supporting Cambodia's energy transition, expanding UK-ASEAN cooperation, and boosting trade. Not surprising, given that the UK is trying to sign as many free trade agreements as possible in the wake of its exit from the European Union. The British Embassy in Phnom Penh also stressed that the visit would see discussions on the UK's bid for ASEAN Dialogue Partnership status ahead of Cambodia's chairmanship of ASEAN in 2022. He first met with Environment Minister Mr. Sai Samal, who asked Mr. Raab to buy carbon credits from Cambodia to contribute to the conservation of forests and wildlife, as well as contribute to economic development. The Environment Minister also requested British assistance when it comes to the management and protection of environmental resources. He says the UK's Foreign Secretary has promised to send a fact-finding team to Cambodia to study the areas in which it can help. From that meeting, it was straight into another with Cambodia's Foreign Minister, Mr. Prak Sokhon. After their talks, Mr. Raab tweeted that he was delighted to discuss our shared priorities such as trade, human rights, and Myanmar. He added that the UK was looking forward to working more closely with Cambodia during its 2022 ASEAN chairmanship. Mr. Raab wrapped up his day in the country with a visit to the Tulsleng Genocide Museum and the Documentation Center of Cambodia before leaving for Singapore. Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Prak Sokhon, has attended the Asia-Pacific High-Level Conference on Belt and Road Cooperation. Under the theme, Promoting Cooperation on Combating the Pandemic for Sustainable Recovery, the summit was held virtually on Wednesday. Hosted by China's Foreign Minister Wang Yi, the summit focused on strengthening collective efforts in combating the pandemic while looking ahead to a sustainable and inclusive economic recovery for the region. Foreign Affairs Minister Mr. Prak Sokhan joins his counterparts from across the Asia-Pacific region, all with a stake in China's Belt and Road Initiative. According to his office, the Deputy Prime Minister's keynote address focuses on key issues including promoting open and inclusive multilateralism, promoting partnerships and international cooperation, encouraging equitable access to COVID-19 vaccines around the world, and working towards a post-pandemic recovery that is sustainable. China's Belt and Road Initiative will be playing a key role in that recovery. One example of that in Cambodia is National Road 3, which is almost 100% complete. The 135-kilometer dual carriageway links Phnom Penh's Chom Chow roundabout with Kampot. Transport Minister Mrs. Sun Chantol led an inspection of the highway on Tuesday. Construction is being carried out by the China Road and Bridge Corporation, the same group responsible for the Phnom Penh Sihanoukville Expressway. That is over 55% complete. National Road 3 has taken almost four years to construct, with a total budget of just over $2 billion financed by the Royal Government of Cambodia, together with a concessional loan from China. Like the Phnom Penh Sihanoukville Expressway, the new National Road 3 is expected to be a huge boost for tourism and logistics, dramatically reducing travel time and transport costs between the capital and the popular coastal town. Cambodia has reported 587 new COVID-19 cases over the past 24 hours, and its third highest daily death toll at 16. 18 deaths were reported on Tuesday. The highest daily death toll of 20 was announced on Saturday. The latest figures were released by the health ministry shortly before noon on Wednesday. Of the 587 new cases, 54 were imported. There have been 548 patient recoveries since Tuesday, taking the total number of successful treatments to 39,314. Cambodia's total COVID-19 case tally now stands at 44,711. The death toll 
has reached 475. The World Health Organization says there has been a massive drop in reported cases of dengue fever across Southeast Asia this year. Malaysia, Thailand, Indonesia, the Philippines, Laos, and Cambodia are all enjoying a vastly improved dengue fever season, with Cambodia's case count down 72% on last year, which was already 88% down on the year before. The WHO says that the COVID-19 pandemic may have led to some underreporting of cases, but also believes that the pandemic's lockdowns and social distancing measures have had some positive effects. When the pandemic hit last year, many experts predicted a surge in dengue cases with people spending extended periods of time at home, but it would seem the opposite is true. The WHO has noted that less movement of people in cities especially could well be behind the drop in cases, putting a renewed focus on dengue control measures at schools and places of work. Dengue fever is a potentially fatal disease spread by infected Aedes aegypti mosquitoes. They're the ones with the black and white stripes. Their larvae can survive more than a year before developing into mosquitoes when the first monsoon rains arrive. The drop in cases is welcome news in Cambodia, which experienced a surge in cases in 2019. Over 60,000 people became infected, and there were over 150 deaths. At the time, scientists said this was part of a seasonal cycle, with cases peaking every five to 10 years. After the break, it's sport and lifestyle with Alessio Mitsoni. Eots Cambodia's audience is growing. Our YouTube channel now has 150,000 verified subscribers. To mark the milestone, we've received the Silver Creator Award from YouTube, given to channels with over 100,000 subscribers. YouTube CEO Susan Wojcicki says the award celebrates eArts Cambodia's hard work and incredible achievement. She says not only has eArts Cambodia brought a unique voice and style to the world, but has also created valuable connections and built a community along the way. The next milestone we're going for is 1 million subscribers, and we'd really like that Gold Creator Award. So if you're not already a subscriber, head to www.youtube.com forward slash eartscambodia. Subscribers get all the latest breaking news and updates from Cambodia in English. We'll see you there. If it's happening and you need to know about it, you'll get it all right here. EAC News brings you updates and breaking news in English across all of eArts Cambodia's platforms and channels. YouTube, Facebook, Telegram, Twitter, and our website, www.eartscambodia.com. Join me, Andrew Barnes-Roberts, and the rest of the EAC News team every day on your favorite channels. EAC News, Cambodia made clear. Welcome back to the Daily Roundup. You're watching EAC News. Thanks for joining us. England has secured top spot in their group at Euro 2020 and will progress to the knockout stage. The three Lions beat the Czech Republic on Tuesday night 1-0. Raheem Sterling's second goal of Euro 2020 saw England win the match and top Group D, setting up a last 16 tie against France, Germany, Portugal or Hungary at Wembley. Scotland were less fortunate last night. They were knocked out of Euro 2020 after losing 3-1 to Croatia. With England and Wales both through the, to the next round, excitement is building in the UK. The Euro 2020 final will be played at Wembley and English and Welsh fans are hoping it will effectively be a home game. Let's see if they can make the magic happen. A team of experts has identified the not-so-secret factors behind why people in certain areas of the world live longer. These areas, called Blue Zones, are Sardinia in Italy, the Japanese city of Okinawa, Icaria in Greece, California's Loma Linda, and the Nicoya Peninsula in Costa Rica. 
All of these areas are home to a large percentage of elderly people, on average much older than in other parts of the world. So, what's the secret to a long life? The research team has identified nine general factors related to diet and lifestyle that can be summarized in two categories. Firstly, physically well-being, which implies regular intense exercise routine to provide a break from daily stress, and eating more plant-based food. Drinking excessively is bad, but a small amount of alcohol here and there might help, confirming the belief that moderate drinkers live longer than non-drinkers. Also, eating moderately without filling up completely seems to help extend your life. The research also highlights the importance of mental well-being. Having solid relationships helps your peace of mind, as does engaging in social groups to promote healthy habits. The last piece of the puzzle in living longer is what the Japanese call ikaigai. Think of it as your reason for getting up in the morning. People with this so-called reason for being tend to have a lot more candles on their birthday cakes. Up next, let's have a look at tomorrow's weather. Thanks for watching the Daily Roundup here on the eArts Cambodia channel. More breaking news and updates on our website. Head to www.e-artscambodia.com. More from the EAC News team tomorrow night. We'll see you then.